Is your USB HDMI capture jumpy? Here's why and how to work around it. Hi, I'm Matt, and welcome to Crazy Logic. So I'm working with Ubuntu Linux here and a program called FF Play, but the same theory applies on the Mac and Windows. Big Buck Bunny is the test content here and I'll link to that in the description below. So the reason why it's jumpy is that it's a really low frame rate, which is usually five frames a second. And the reason for this is pretty obvious once you start digging into it. So let's do a v4l2-ctl space dash dash list dash devices to see what we have. And then FF play slash dev slash video zero for me to see it. As you can see, it's jumpy. And from the stream info in the terminal, you can see it's five frames a second and it's raw video. So how do we fix this? So if you do a v4l2-ctl space dash dash device and then slash dev slash video zero for me then space dash dash all it will give some info about the device. So mine says it's a USB 3 but with ls usb and then dash t you can see it's actually only connecting at 480 megabit which is USB 2 standards. 480 megabit isn't enough bandwidth to push a full raw frame at 1080 at any higher frame rate. So the options we have available are to drop the frame size or the resolution or to move to a compressed format like MJPEG but that's only if the device supports it. So to find out if it does support it do a v4l2-ctl space dash dash list dash formats dash ext space dash d and then space slash dev slash video zero for me and that lists all the possible modes that the device supports. So you can see here I have the YEYV formats and also the MJPEG formats. So dropping to 720, we add the video underscore size to the command, as you can see on screen. It's less jumpy, but not fluid. You can see that we only get 10 frames a second in the terminal. Increasing back up to 1080, we can use the compressed format by adding the pixel underscore format option as on screen. And this gives a much more fluid image, indistinguishable from the original file for most purposes. There's a slight delay to this, but it's much more usable. I'll stick all of these commands in the blog post that I'll link in the description. So this has been a pretty brief look into this and a potential workaround. In another video, I'll show you how you can use this with OBS, which doesn't support Motion JPEG as an input natively. Big thanks to the Blender Foundation and to all those who worked on the Big Buck Bunny video. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe.